Well, this will finish up chapter one. So this is page three of Early Man. So we start out with the Mesolithic Age. We previously talked about the Paleolithic or Old Stone Age. This is Mesolithic or Middle Stone Age. And hopefully that's easy to remember because Mesolithic and Middle start with an M. Uh, 10,000 to 7,000 BC. And at this time there was a gradual shift from the hunter-gatherer um, economy that they had where they were out hunting for roots and berries and nuts and whatever they could find, hunting for animals, to um, becoming more settled. So there was this gradual shift because it would take quite a while. A lot, a lot of trial and error, process of elimination. Okay, then we move on to the Neolithic Revolution or New Stone Age. And this is around 8,000 BC to 4,000 BC. So again, this is where they definitely begin systematic agriculture. So a shift from hunting and gathering to keeping animals and growing of their own food. They don't have to look for it along the way as they travel. They can uh, plant it themselves and harvest the crops. They, they have a knowledge or have developed and learned a knowledge of putting seeds in the ground and something is going to come from it. Oh, sorry, just a quick, uh, quick thing on that previous page. Um, they also started to keep animals uh, instead of going out and, and hunting wild animals that are, you know, uh, quite a ways away, they're going to see you and boom, they're, they're gone, they're going to run away. Where today, if we have a, a pasture with cows in it, you know, they might, they might move away, but they're not real terrified and stampeding away from us. So that leads us to this one, which is domestication. Uh, too tame, and it's adapting the animals for human use. Uh, you might say a beast of burden. Uh, later on, eventually, when something like the plow is invented in um, the Industrial Revolution, then certainly those animals would have been able to pull that plow and been, and been used for that. So they take the meat, they use the hides, the bones, any other material from the animal that they could, but they also use them as uh, work animals to maybe carry loads for them. Artisans were skilled workers that make goods to trade with others, and the storing of surplus products, surplus food stuffs, encouraged trade. So if you have a supply of something and another village has a supply of something different, and you both need that item, uh, it would be very easy for you to trade with each other and then both get what they need. Um, so that encouraged contact with other people and starting to trade. Um, also, uh, more people at this time started to learn crafts. This led to a division of labor. So not everyone was out looking for food. They weren't out hunting. A uh, few people still were but more could stay home in the village um, and, and make products. They can make baskets or pottery or tools or weapons for the hunters to use or to, for whoever. And these items could also be traded with other people that maybe they had a, a specialty item they made that um, you didn't have but you wanted and you had something they didn't have. Again, you could trade for those items. Um, had a thought. Anyway, um, oh, so kind of like um, it's telling me my low battery's low. That's why I did that. Um, so it, it also reminds me of today. So in our society in America, um, when I was in high school, it was about four people for every hundred that were needed in agriculture to produce enough food. Uh, today, I think it's down to two, so we're, we're doing very well. But division of labor is each person would sp have a specialty. They would be very good at making pottery or baskets, and so that's division of labor. Okay, moving on, Bronze Age, 3,000 to 12,000 B.C., combining copper and tin, and this created bronze, and bronze was much harder and more durable than copper. 
So there's a video I show on the building of the Great Pyramids, and it shows them uh, chipping or uh, hitting stone with copper chisels. And it says after about a hundred blows that the copper chisel is dulled and they have to resharpen it. And so with the, the tin and the copper together, uh, it, it made bronze, which was a much uh, more durable material. Okay. Oh, and then the Iron Age, after about 1000 BC, the use of iron for tools and weapons. And I'm always reminded that the country of Japan never went through an Iron Age, which I think is very interesting. They just did not have a lot of natural resources. Um, once they could start importing those resources, uh, they could import iron and turn it into uh, a more durable product of steel. So Iron Age and then the Steel Age, but Japan didn't have the Iron Age at all. Okay. And we have civilization. So this class is called World Civilizations. Uh, basically, it's a world history class. So there are certain features or characteristics that a, a group needs in order to be considered a civilization. Uh, so it's a complex culture in which human beings share these common elements. So they have, um, some books will have like, I don't know, seven or eight, um, but these are the most important, and I think there's six of them. So they have uh, cities, governments, religion. Religion's very important for people of all ages, clear back then to us today. Social structure, writing, and art. So uh, the, the early man that we're studying right now may not have had cities until later on when systematic agriculture came about. If they're kind of spread out, maybe a government wasn't really needed, but religion is very important. Um, probably had some kind of a, a basic social structure. Uh, writing, again, probably not early on, uh, but later they would have developed writing, but they definitely had art, uh, the cave art that we've seen. Okay. Uh, cities first developed in river valleys. So, of course, as human beings, we need water. Uh, water is necessary to, for survival. And so the four main river valleys where early civilizations began would be uh, Nile River and the Egyptians. Tigris and Euphrates in the Middle East would be like uh, the Sumerians or Macedonians, Mesopotamian people, Indus or India yellow or Huanghe River in China. So there are many other rivers throughout the world, but these are the four where the earliest civilizations began. Now this one might seem odd that it's in a, a chapter on early man. Uh, kings or queens who rule a kingdom, but as these civilizations evolved and developed and they started to have these communities and they grew bigger and bigger, eventually they would need those governments and, and some of them were very similar to a king or queen and having a monarchy and basically the difference is between our president who is elected a monarchy is someone who uh, is chosen but then after they're in power uh, it's their family line that is the one that continues to rule so for example when Queen, queen Elizabeth in England or Great Britain when she passes away uh, it will be her son that will come to power and he will be a king. So then I ask the question, uh, is Queen Elizabeth's husband a king? And the answer is no. He's, a, I believe, a prince. So it's her family line that is, has the ruling blood, if you will. So, okay. And then finally, priests, they supervise rituals aimed at pleasing the gods. Uh, again, many Civilizations and groups uh, throughout history have had religion as a very uh, important part. And these early priests uh, were important because they almost played the part and did play the part as the leader of that government or group. So they were one in the same. Today, of course, we're separated. But back then, the priest and the leader of the group could have been the same person and probably was. Um, okay. So that takes us to the end of page three. Uh, this it, some, might look familiar to some of you. It is um, the movie called uh, 10,000 BC. If you've never seen it, it's pretty good, uh, pretty, 
pretty good movie that kind of goes along with this early chapter on early man. So, okay, thank you.